Today's story is Nevermore by Ghost Inc. The sound purged my ear, forever engraving itself deep within. I've heard the sound many times, but none felt like this. The sound of a clock ticking down with time. I myself never thought too much of it until now. From the pitch black darkness, my eyes were pierced by a bright light and a burning sensation as water rushed across them. Lifting my head quickly, completely soaked from the sink that poured on me, I tried to find my breath. The sink itself was filled to the brim, almost to the point of overflowing. Turning it off, I stared at myself through the slightly cracked mirror. Scars of all kinds gave my body a story to tell one day. My brown hair, dirty and oily, I felt purely disgusted. Before turning away, however, I could have sworn I saw a glimpse of someone. A mask they wore with, with crossed out eyes. Ignoring it, finding myself leaving the bathroom, I stumbled upon my bed. My body fell flat on top of it, feeling the nice and smooth blanket below me. It's been days since I've been able to stay in my bed, a harsh reality of the world drifting off of me for a moment. It was peaceful. The night itself, it was a different story to tell. Cars drove by loudly, honking their horns at most likely the dumbest of reasons, keeping me up more than I would like. Though that, however, wasn't anything new. Despite me finally being at peace, I didn't dare close my eyes. I waited. I waited for the sound of death calling me from the phone that laid on the nightstand. The past few nights that I've been here, I've gotten hardly any sleep. Yet, still, I am breathing. I didn't choose this job for them. I chose it for the reasons that I could never tell them. How the corporation works. I believe that the revenge story isn't something they would exactly accept. At least, not mine anyways. Years ago, it all felt like a dream before this nightmare began. I... I had a family. Nine years ago. The sound of an alarm awoke me from a deep sleep. I usually dreaded waking up. Always tired. I hated going to my office job. Today, however, was a little different. My daughter, Rosie, had her birthday today. Funnily enough, she wanted to be with me, a walk in the park. An odd request. She usually liked to be with her mom, sometimes both of us, though today... Today was a surprise. Sitting up from my bed, I realized that my wife, Heather, wasn't with me. Before I could really question it, however, the smell of delicious bacon filled my nose. I didn't hesitate to jump out of bed, landing on the cold, hard floor and coming down to see who was cooking. Of course, I knew who it would be. Peeking my head over the corner, I saw her, her strawberry blonde hair gleaming its glow within the sun. Just seeing it made me crack a smile without realizing it. Walking over, she turned to me, startled, before quickly giving out a slight chuckle. Oh, jeez, you almost gave me a heart attack, she laughed. Sorry, I figured you would have heard me walking over. I laughed with her. I saw she was cooking the usual breakfast that you see. The modern cuisine. Eggs, bacon, toast, you get the gist of it. I hugged her before I went to wake up Rosie. The hall that led to her room gave off a strange vibe. Even walking down this hall hundreds, maybe thousands of times... I didn't feel right walking down it this time. Regardless, I carried on down, 
it must just be me being weird, as usual. Opening the door, an angel lay to sleep within. The mix of brown and orange sparkled as I approached. Crouching down to her face, I poked her nose. She woke up, smiled before turning away. I rolled my eyes before poking her on her side. I got her to sit up and... She gave me the goofiest angry face that a child could give. No tickles, Daddy, she said, crossing her arms. I won't. I just had to wake you up. And mommy's making breakfast, I pointed out with a slight chuckle. Her eyes widened as she jumped out of bed, running out of the room and screaming mommy. I couldn't help but smile. She always was a funny one, Though she did have her moments of being a little brat, but that's all kids, right? Walking out of the room, I felt a presence behind me. Curious, I turned, yet nothing was there. I shook my head, believing it to be nothing but my own imagination. Entering the dining room, I saw Rosie at the table, ready to eat all that she could. I sat a chair across from her, a warm smile crossed my face once again. It was a day that I was able to get off of work and celebrate for my daughter. What would be better than that? You excited for the park later? I asked her. Yes, she yelled excitedly. It's been too long. <laughs> that it has. I agreed. Best to hurry and eat so we can go early. Her little eyes widened even more in excitement as she barely was patient for her food to come to the table. When Heather brought the food over, Rosie couldn't help but scarf the food down without any hesitation. I could only give an awkward smile as I watched, feeling slow as I ate. Heather only laughed as she was watching herself. After at least ten minutes, we were already starting to get ready. I put on a nice jacket being in the middle of fall, the weather gets rather chilly. Rosie put on a dress shirt, wearing her favorite hat that Heather had given her only a year ago. Never once did she leave the house without it, ever since she got it. Excited to go to the park, I didn't keep her waiting. I gave Heather a quick kiss before she waved at us goodbye. Upon getting in the car, Rosie looked at me weirdly. Daddy? She called to me. You think I can sit in the front seat today? Usually, I would say no to this because of her age, but I reluctantly let her, because it was her birthday. Driving on to the main road, it wasn't as packed as I thought it could be. In fact, barely any cars drove by us at all. I didn't think much of it, ignoring any real sense of reason, Eventually, we made it to the park, which was entirely dead. The strange vibe from before hit me again, yet I ignored it. Walking down the park, the wind blew shallow, barely moving my hair. I didn't hear a sound or a peep of anything. Beside us was a playground, swings moving back and forth as if a kid was still swinging upon them. Looking down where Rosie usually would be, she wasn't anywhere. From where I stood, there was not a sign of her to be seen. Rosie wasn't anywhere. Rosie? I yelled in a panic. I heard giggling some distance from me. Running to the source, I found myself stopping dead within my tracks. Two hooded figures, no taller than me. Their robes, a dark red like blood, hands were as pale as snow with clawed tips. My daughter laughed as they stood by her. Not being amused in the slightest, I yelled at them to get away from her. They turned their heads, faces still shrouded in darkness as two hands peered the front of the hood. I stood frozen. What were these things? Before I had a second to react... The one behind her grabbed on her arms before yanking them. She was quickly pulled away, 
making me stand before what unearthly thing this was. My adrenaline fueled through my veins as I ran towards them, my fists balled up, yet it ran away, avoiding my punch entirely. I followed the direction where the other took my daughter, hearing her scream as she called my name. Rosie! I yelled for her again as I ran in a panic, barely able to catch my breath. Rosie, I'm coming! Tears flushed through my eyes as I saw them standing beside her. I saw her crying as they held her arms tightly. I could see their claws were ready to dig into her arms if I stepped any closer. I fell to my knees as I begged. Her tears flowed down her pink cheeks and I couldn't do anything to save her. I was weak, powerless even, to the point that I was brought down to my knees. Please don't, I begged them, only hoping that they understood my words. These weren't human. They weren't anything from here. These were monsters. I shouted at them one last time before I blinked to see them vanish before me. Where they once stood was Rosie's hat. I was left speechless, tears still pouring from my eyes like a waterfall. My world entirely flipped upside down on the very day that it was not supposed to. My heart shattered. My mind was baffled in disbelief. I was sinking within a deep pit of darkness and despair. My body frozen, my eyes in a dead stare where they last stood, forever lost. Steps approached behind me, causing my head to turn to that direction. People in what seemed like military gear, weapons armed and pointing at me. I stared at them with my eyes still pouring. I didn't say a word till one of them slammed me to the ground, a foot upon my head. Despite the pain, I didn't make a sound or say a word. Searching my body before handcuffing me like I was a suspect of something, I didn't move. I didn't bother to budge or to resist. Not a care in the world remained within my mind. I'd lost my daughter. The angel that my wife and I had created for this world, only for her to be snatched from my hands instantly. Not realizing it, my vision of the light ran away as darkness fogged it. It wasn't long until all I saw was nothing but pitch black. Even, even my hearing doled out into nothing. I felt myself jerk as I woke up, spitting out something I couldn't tell what it was. Catching my breath, I heard a voice in front of me. Stay calm, you're in a safe place, the man in front of me said. I didn't exactly care if it was safe. I didn't honestly want to know what I was safe from. I looked at him. I studied how he looked. Despite dressing almost like he was in the military, he definitely wasn't anywhere close to it. This was a completely different group. Undercover, potentially? The government is shady most of the time. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a funded secret corporate branch. The room itself was purely white, the table and chair being the same, a one-sided window beside me. People were definitely watching us from the other side. Where am I? I finally said. The better question is, who are you? He asked, his tone shifting to being more serious than cautious. Knowing how this person most likely was, I didn't hesitate to argue with him over getting me answers. Reluctantly, I answered him. My name is Ethan, I responded. Ethan, you are a survivor of a creature encounter. I know that sounds crazy, not many can believe it, but because of that, certain measures are in place. He began, in simpler terms, you will no longer be able to see your family anymore. If we allow it, you would be putting you and your family in a greater danger. Hearing the word family rung in my ears like an echo, it repeated constantly. A hopeless smile grew on my face. Without realizing it, 
I told him about my family, and how wonderful my parents were, and my wife, and the best of them all, my daughter. Everything I told him, it all felt wrong. Somehow, like I was lying. Memories were all flowing back into my head all at once, and my smile slowly disappeared. The man got up, about to leave to give me time to think about a certain decision, leaving me two open options, working for the corporation, or staying and waiting for something more than likely not ending soon to see my family once again. I have no family, I blurted out. The man turned his head with confusion resting upon his face. Didn't you say your family was wonderful? You wouldn't trade them for a thing, right? He asked with a confused tone. I've just been living a dream. One I created to hopefully make the pain go away. I began. My parents were not something that I would consider good in the slightest. I was seen as inferior to my two older brothers. My parents wanted me to be just like them. Be as great as them, yet I was so different. They looked upon me with disappointment. The man sat down, listening to what I had to say. Once I reached 18, they were swift in kicking me out of the house. Not once did they help me with money, call me, or acknowledge my existence as a whole. Around 22, I found this woman, a woman that became my wife a couple of years later. She was, in a lack of a better word, a disaster. Constantly cheating on me until one day she told me that we were having a child. As she smiled, not at me, but at the fact that we were having a daughter. I knew that once she found out I was the father, she dreaded that fact. Once my daughter Rosie was born, I was barely able to see because of how much I worked. This, I know, made my wife Heather happy because she didn't have to deal with my dead weight. Then, today, after so many years, Rosie wanted to be with me on her birthday. I finally had a real smile on my face. The little angel who I wanted to be with for so long. When Heather heard Rosie's request, I saw the disappointment behind her fake smile. Before I left today, I saw in her eyes that she wished I was never around Rosie. With all that, I wanted to show Rosie how good of a father I was. How all the hardship that I went through that I could still be a good person. Yet, she was taken away from me without the slightest hesitation. From things that were not of this world, she was taken. The only person, the only thing that I cared about is forever gone out of my life. So, if you want me to join you, to help you, I'll gladly take your offer. For me, even if I were to go back, she would blame me for losing her. I would be arrested anyways, so I'll work for you. I want to have purpose that I've been searching for. Tears began to slowly roll down my cheeks as I tried holding back. The man in front of me realized and felt my pain. He knew what it was like to lose what you loved the most. His eyes showed enough for me to see that. Standing back up to leave the room, he turned to me one last time. We have to set up some things before we can officially bring you in. Should be ready by tomorrow, but for now, we have to keep you in a secure location. Glad to have you, Ethan, he explained. Glad to be here, sir, I said to him. He nodded and left the room, leaving me alone once again. Tired, I rested my head on the table and drifted back off to the pitch black that fogged my eyes once more. Back to present day, that's my story. That's how I got here. What I do is a different story of its own. Laying on the bed I was in, cars continue to drive by, honking their horns. I... I feel alone still, yet at peace at the same time. My eyes drifted as I continued to stare at my phone, waiting 
for the ring of death to call to my ears. Yet, nothing happened. Was this finally going to be a night where I could rest? I doubted it completely, yet I didn't resist letting my eyes close. It felt good, letting my eyes rest just once. The sounds dulled as I fell asleep, finding myself again in the pitch black of my mind. I saw something. This time, however, something that was new to me. A hand grabbing towards my face. They wore a white hoodie, a mask with crossed out eyes. I felt their hand grasp my face, yet I didn't feel any pain as they squished it. Before I knew it, they disappeared without a trace, leaving me alone. Never once could I figure out who they were. I'd never seen something like them, but they appear in my dreams more than once a week. I heard a sound pierce my ear, the buzz of a phone. Wind was blowing throughout the room as my eyes began to open. Sitting up, I saw a chunk of my wall torn off, revealing the outside street. A car crashed into the building across from the one I was in. The buzz of my phone. I knew who was calling. Not picking it up, I climbed out of bed, walking barefoot over to the broken wall. It felt chilly, with the cold air running through my room. Staring out, I saw something moving. Gray, skinny, it was about my height, sharp claws and teeth, walking on two feet. The one in front of me now, classified as the rake, was one of the few that are common. Yet, it stared, dead into my face, growling at me as it got on all fours. I used to believe that monsters were nothing but legends, myths, and nightmares manifested by children with fear. Yet, when I tell you this, you won't believe me. It was only a matter of time, but they are real. Every single one. So that was Once Again, Nevermore by Ghost Inc. And if you really enjoyed that story, you should probably 